brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather for this special Mass on this day in which we reconsecrate our diocese to the care and protection of the Blessed Mother, who leads us and all souls to the heart of her Son. It's wonderful to gather this day. These are trying times. They're difficult times. And as the time of the pandemic goes on, and as people feel the kind of stress of being distanced and of being out of school, and for many being away, of work, for, away from work, and, and of kind of new kinds of profound ways in which we're in each other's space and face, uh, especially in our families, um, these are different times. The activity in the diocese certainly has calmed, but the number of meetings have, have not, at least not for me. I've never, like everyone else, used technology so much. And this week we had several meetings uh, via video conference. And one of the comments really struck, struck me, and it came yesterday at our liturgy commission, and one of the members says, said that all of this time feels like a giant reset. That God, through this situation, is asking us, maybe forcing us, to reset our lives. Not just our personal lives, but our relationships, our world, many of our systems. She spoke of politics and economics in summary. She was right. This is certainly happening. Someone else said, it's like a Lent that has never ended. <laughs> Even though we are in the Easter season, and so we are, this is much like an extended Lent. But the person added, but a, a Lent like none other. The readings tonight that we read from the feast day of St. Joseph the Worker kind of uh, reminded me of the extended Lent. And I know in my life, sometimes when Lent has finished, I know I'm not finished. Maybe I haven't done justice to my Lenten journey. Or maybe Lent has only just begun something that in the Easter season needs to continue. As we look at the readings tonight, there's a, a bit of a reinforcement of this message of ongoing conversion. Obviously, the first reading, St. Paul, the conversion of St. Paul, one of the great lessons. Saul's zeal for religious and cultural observance actually moves him away from the heart of the one true God that he thought he was promoting and defending. And furthermore, Saul did great damage because of this. Uh, he was literally killing people, killing Christians. Why would this happen? Well, I can't judge. I can only hardly judge myself. But uh, as we look at the life of Paul, the thing that made the difference was he hadn't met Jesus. And when he met Jesus, everything changed. It was almost as if until he met the Lord himself, um, this Jesus he heard of was a threat. And it, he was so angry at that threat, he was going to eliminate it. It was part of his personality and his zeal. Once he met Jesus, everything changed. Um, he went through a, a time of temporarily losing his sight, and then when the scales fell from his eyes, then he could see. Uh, he could see more than he ever saw because he had met the Lord Jesus Christ. Another message in our gospel, ironically, about uh, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, the famous Eucharist passage in John 6, you have no life in you, ironically, we are not able to receive the body and blood of Christ because we cannot publicly celebrate the Eucharist. And yet, as I was reflecting on this gospel, another gospel passage came to mind. And it was the Beatitudes, where we hear one of the Beatitudes, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is a time in which we hunger and thirst for Jesus in a profound way because of a, a partial absence of Jesus from us in the Holy Eucharist. Now, we know he's not absent from us. 
He's present to us in his word. He's present to us in so many other ways in the world, in our prayer, um, in our life with each other, especially in our service with each other. Um, But the sacraments are a profound blessing, and we miss them very much. But maybe the beatitude, blessed are those who hunger and thirst, can remind us of the privilege and the gift of hungering for what will truly satisfy. It's one of the great issues of life. Um, Hunger and thirst is not the problem. A feeding on that which will really satisfy, that's the issue. And we all face that. It's why our yes should mean yes and our no mean no. When we say yes to God and to one another, it must be the right yes. And it's okay to say no for the sake of the right yes. And the ultimate yes is to meet the Lord, is to receive the Lord, and is to imitate the Lord in our lives. So we do hunger and thirst as we wait in joyful hope for the time when we can again receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And we are so thankful for the Lord for blessing us, sustaining us, and holding us in many other ways at this time. Another thing, though, I'm hearing from people, I want to share this briefly, and I think I'd like to bring it to prayer tonight as we do the consecration, and also reflect on the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, There's two cautions that come up in the scriptures, pardon me, three cautions, that uh, we hear them in the Advent season, but we hear them sometimes in parts of the Lenten season as well. When we're called to profound conversion to meet the Lord, when we are called to a time of, of, of being in the desert, we can sometimes stop the opportunity of conversion. One of the ways is beware of dissipation and drunkenness. We hear it in Luke 21. It's not just the drunkenness, it's any way in which we simply try to bide the time to get through the opportunity and the challenge so we can just get back to the way things were. Uh, I've heard many people lament, you know, people can buy their alcohol and even their other stuff, but they can't get to the Eucharist. And And I hear that, I hear that very loudly. But we can get to the Lord, and that's an important thing we must do. And we must not stop through a temporary uh, kind of dissipation or activities or drunkenness or the like. We shouldn't stop ourselves from the opportunity to encounter something deeper. But it might mean stopping and daring to acknowledge, you know, I'm a little empty. I'm a little bit fearful. I'm a little bit angry. Whatever it is and dare to give it to the Lord in the emptiness of the moment. The other uh, caution is be wearing of indifference, melancholy, and a lack of hope. This is a big issue, Um, and we hear about that in Romans 13. Be alert at all times, not not getting caught up in quarreling and gossip and jealousy. And so uh, being aware of the things that rob us of hope, Because for Christians, hope is not positive thinking. It's really resting in the belief of the Lord and Savior who's been with us, who's healed us, who's given his life for us, who has suffered, died, and was buried, and now is risen up. Resurrection, hope is our destiny because of Jesus Christ. That's not just a positive attitude. It's real hope. And that hope is to animate everything. And the last caution is Luke 21. Avoid the uproars, the noise, the melee, the confusion. This has always been with us. And let's not worry about the gossip or the predictions or wondering if it's the end of time. Each day we are, is, we are to hear and allow the Lord to take care of us and not get worried about dread, in dread and fear about what may happen today or two days or one year or ten years from now. These are cautions that are given to us in the scriptures and they're good cautions because they stop us from going deeper. The alternative is expectancy and hope. Um, The Lord will do great things even in the worst situation. Remember what we preached on Good Friday. God does not will evil but he is able to bless 
even the evil that happens with his grace and blessing. It's one of the great mysteries of how God permits good and bad to happen, but his grace will build on absolutely anything and everything. So let us be awake and watchful as we wait in joyful hope for the blessing of the Lord today and always. In our consecration, or again our reconsecration, we join with Mary, the mother of the Jesus and the mother of the church, to consecrate our diocese to the protection of Mary. And we pray that Mary, our mother and the mother of our Savior, will lead and guide all souls to the sacred heart of her son, Jesus. And what we will also do is we will begin this night a prayer to the sacred heart. And I would like to express, as the Bishop of Saskatoon, my thanks to the Bishop of the, of, of the Diocese of Calgary uh, for um, his support and allowing us to use and expand this prayer because the Diocese of Calgary is, is doing the same thing. And it was their inspiration that helped us to uh, uh, do this prayer and commit our lives to the Sacred Heart in prayer at this time as well. We also pray uh, and hold up the Sacred Heart of Jesus as a way in which we open our trust in God. And we also pray for those who strive to imitate that Sacred Heart in these trying times, especially again the healthcare workers, the caregivers, the service providers, gee, the people in the stores stocking the grocery shelves, which sometimes has not been easy as they deal with the fear and the, and the rush and the anxiety of all the customers. We, we thank all who keep us going in these times. I'd also want to hold up our chaplains and other people who visit our hospitals and seniors facilities to bring pastoral care. And finally, we celebrate this on the feast day of St. Joseph the Worker. And I think this has a message for us in these times as well. You know, Joseph was quite under the radar. We, we, we don't hear a word from him in the scriptures. <laughs> um, but what we do see of Joseph is the faithful, steady care and work of a father and of a husband who... Uh, ends up being the foster father of the savior of the world. We also reflect on this day of Joseph the worker about the significance of our work as we share in the mission of the Lord. And the little things we do, the little bit of work we do this day, um, is a part of something much greater than ourselves. Our particular yes in faithfulness to God is the way in which we touch the universal plan of the Lord. And our particular little mundane lives are significant to God. That's his mystery that we have the privilege of entering into. Many people have said, you know, Bishop Mark, you know, in these COVID times, it's tough to get out of bed. Um, it's tough to keep the routines. It's tough to kind of do the things I know that are good for me and my family. But it's good to do them. These COVID times challenge us to look closely at the significance of doing the little mundane things well. Work is not just about money and a paycheck. Work is about having the privilege to work alongside of the creator of the world and to share in the mission of the Savior to save the world in the little life that we have. And to never say yes to that, well... Gee, what a missed opportunity. Maybe this COVID time is precisely a time uh, to say a yes we've held off on saying and to walk with the Lord in his life and work. And we pray for inspiration from St. Joseph the worker uh, to look at a life that was so little and under the radar and yet look at the impact it had. And so much to celebrate on this day. We pray for the protection of Mary, our mother. We pray for the inspiration and the care of the sacred heart of the Lord. And we thank St. Joseph, the patron of Canada, for his faithful stewardship of our dioceses throughout Canada. And may he continue to inspire and lead us 
about what it means to share in the mission of the Savior. Amen.